Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back again with another episode. Hey, isn't it the 4th of July? Hey, I guess it is! Well, this will be our second 4th of July episode then! Wait a minute, Gorilla. You've been doing this for three years. What happened on last year's 4th of July? That's a good question! Hmm. Ah, it's unimportant! What is important is that today is the 4th of July and we're doing a special! Okay, so what kind of figures are we going to review on America's birthday? Ooh, ooh, I got just the thing! No, no, no. Jose Canseco! Here it is! <laughs> the Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle! Wow, is that the original one from the 1970s? Nah, it's a repro. Repro, man. Aren't those usually pretty crap, Gorilla? Well, we're gonna find out! Rass Holly hit the music! Evil Knievel, for those of you that don't know, is probably the most well-known stunt performer ever, whose fame peaked in the 1970s, which in my opinion was a golden age for toys. Between 1972 and 1977, the Ideal Toy Company released a series of Evil Knievel related merchandise. The most well-known of these is the Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle, which during its production became the top-selling toy Ideal produced. By the 1980s, Knievel, due to controversy over an assault charge and the passage of time, had fallen into relative obscurity, traveling the U.S. in an RV, selling his paintings. Really? He painted? But nostalgia always kicks in eventually, and by the late 1990s, Knievel was back making the rounds, and toy companies would soon follow as a few reissues, reproductions, and reimaginings of evil Knievel toys were produced by various companies. That brings us to this year. California Creations got the license to produce the crown jewel of evil Knievel merch, the Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. And because it was a pretty good price, I got one myself. The packaging looks good for the most part, but it is a far cry from the awesome painted artwork of the Ideal Box or even the Playing Mantis reissue from 1998. It does, however, give you a good idea of what the figure looks like and what it comes with. Check out the backside. I kind of like this. Instead of packing this thing full of inserts that most people will never think to look at, everything you need to know is printed in big bold print on the back of the box, just like Totino's Pizza Rolls. Inside, you'll find the Energizer, the Stunt Cycle, and a fairly close replica of the original Evil Knievel figure. The Evil Knievel figure is a bendy, just as he was back then, which is pretty cool. He looks pretty close to the original, as you can see here, I have an original. Now, the original looks like absolute shit, and he's missing his helmet, and cane, and whatever the fuck this thing used to come with, but as you can see, the new version is pretty close, but shouldn't fool anybody into thinking that it's not a reissue. As for the rest of this crap, let's take a look at the Energizer. The Energizer comes in two pieces, and is pretty self-explanatory on how to put it together. If you're too stupid to figure it out by eyeballing it, there's detailed directions on the back of the box for you. 
Another thing I like about this is that the decals come already applied and where they're supposed to be. Some people like putting on the decals, but then again some people are cunts. So let's take a look at what we're all here for, the stunt cycle. It's different enough from the original as this one is black, but the decals all look great. It's got rubber tires, bouncy suspension, a kickstand, and some awesome chrome features. Too much stuff nowadays skimps on the chrome. What the hell? Usually you'll see things painted in a silver or gold color and it just looks like shit. Cheap plastic shit. I'm glad California Creations went the extra mile here and gave us some kick-ass reflective chrome. Okay, so let's put it all together and see what we get. Jesus, of course. Like most modern bendies, evil isn't super bendy. Oh, he bends. But if you were expecting him to hold his pose, hey, fuck you, buddy. He doesn't really sit on the bike like in the picture, but then in the fine print it says, Evil does not sit down wholly on the seat, but rides in true stuntman fashion, supported only by his toes and hands. Okay then, then draw the fucking picture with him standing. I almost broke this fucking thing trying to get him to sit. This is all fine and good, but what happens when we break the original Evil Knievel out of retirement? and try to stick them on there. Well, what do you know? It's way easier to get them on. He's softer and more pliable and poseable than his modern counterpart. I'm not sure if that's a product of time or build quality, but I'm inclined to lean toward the latter. Okay, boomer. Boomer? You're a boomer! I'm a millennial! I'm a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. So at a glance, it's not too bad if you just wanted a cool conversation piece or something to show your kids what things were like in the old days. Most people that get this are likely to use it as a display rather than setting up ramps or obstacles to ride over or through. So you're not gonna try to use it? Look who you're talking to! Of course we're gonna see how it works! Let's go check it out right now! Episode. What did any of this have to do with the 4th of July, Gorilla? Well, uh, you know, his outfit is, uh, it's American-ish. Oh yeah, great reasoning. Evil Knievel is an American original. He was a hard-living, hard-riding, hard-drinking, red-blooded dude in a decade that had a bunch to choose from. He practically invented the Daredevil genre, and even though he died years ago, his influence lives on. So I guess there wasn't a George Washington figure available. Yeah, actually it was too expensive. I knew it! Oh shut up, Jess! Raz Holly, hit the music! Duke, 